In this video, we're going to look at how to set up production and development environments in PowerShell Universal. The idea here is that we're going to use Git to store um, configuration data for PowerShell Universal and use multiple Git branches so that we can use Git flow to actually push and stage changes from a development branch down to a production branch um, that is only ever accessed via um, a pull request um, or merge request coming in via our Git repository. So the first step here is I've created a um, GitHub repo here. This could be GitLab, this could be Azure DevOps, and I've created two branches. Um, we have a main branch, which will be our production branch, and we have a dev branch, which is obviously our dev branch. Depending on how complicated you want to make your Git flow, you could have additional branches where you may have like a QA or staging branch that you kind of push through um, to allow your team to test. But I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'm just going to have a dev and main branch. Currently, these branches are the same. They just have this IT tools uh, readme file in there. And we're actually going to use that um, to configure PowerShell Universal. So in my previous video, I actually showed how to do this, where we can run kind of side by side instances of PowerShell Universal. Typically, you wouldn't be doing this all on one machine. You would have a production machine uh, running one instance of PowerShell Universal and a development um, machine running a different instance. They'd use their own configuration files, they're going to use their own branch, and they're going to use their own persistence, um, either SQLite or um, SQL if you have multiple PowerShell instances um, in a particular environment. So I'm actually going to start with my um, development environment here. Um, if we actually go to this run.ps1, um, copy that path, and I am going to start that up in a Windows terminal so that we can start our development environment. So now that that's running, we um, can access that uh, in a browser. So I'm actually just going to, whoops, <laughs> that's not going to work. There we go. So now we have um, our PowerShell Universal Admin Console here. As you can see, it's just default. And the first step that we need to do is um, install license since Git Sync requires a license. I just have one in my um, environment variable, so that's why that's showing up there. And if we actually go to Git, and now we want to set some Git settings for our um, remote Git repo. So for a development environment, what I would suggest is grabbing the remote, so mine is ittools.git. I want to actually do the dev branch and not the main branch. I'm going to put in my GitHub username. I'm going to put in a personal access token. I am not putting in my password. You can generate these um, inside Git or, uh, or GitHub or whatever you are using. You should treat it like a password. I'm going to set it to um, the sync behavior to two-way so that we can make changes in this environment and push them up to GitHub. And we could also pull changes from GitHub. Uh, I'm going to use the built-in client. If you are having problems, using the external Git client sometimes can be helpful. Um, it actually runs git.exe when you do that, but it does require that git.exe is installed. If you don't use that, we have a built-in library that um, does a lot of the Git commands. Um, but depending on your configuration and stuff like that, using the external command uh, might work a little bit better. Um, and I'm going to set it to manual mode. So what manual mode does is it puts a little edit button inside PowerShell Universal that I need to click to actually uh, start editing things inside the console. Um, this is kind of nice because then you can put a commit message. You can see which files you've actually changed before you actually commit it to Git. And I'm just going to click OK there. And now you can see that I have Git configured. So there's nothing in here. I'm going to click Synchronize Now. and what that's going to do is it's actually going up to Git and it's pulling down the most recent uh, readme file. So you can see here, readme.md is now local. Um, there aren't any other changes that um, have been made inside this environment, but if I do go to settings, configurations, repository, you'll see there's the readme um, from Git. So we pulled that down. So I'm actually going to make a change inside PowerShell Universal now and push it up to my development branch. Because if you look in um, settings, Git, you'll see that I'm on this remote. And here is my dev branch. So what I actually want to do is update the console title. So I see a lot of users do this when they have multiple environments like this so that they know whether they're in prod or um, dev, since a lot of times it can look very similar. So what we're actually going to do is click Edit. And you can see the cha Save Changes button shows up, and it gives you some information that you are in the edit mode. 
And I am actually going to set this to dev. So let's save that change. And if we actually go to configurations, universal settings, you'll see that it actually saves it into this settings.ps1 file. And if I click get, or I mean I click changes, it's going to show me the current change set on my uh, PowerShell Universal server. So I have this one settings at PS1 that is changed. Oh, it's added, so it, yeah, it doesn't have a diff at the moment. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to make this dynamic. So one problem is if I were to commit this, it's a static file. And um, if I commit this to prod, the prod title will also be um, dev. So one thing that I've done in my environment is I've actually set an environment variable. You could do this in numerous ways, uh, but in my case, I'm just doing it in the script. But typically, if you know you're actually running this in production, you would have this stored somewhere else on the machine. And PowerShell Universal can actually read that environment variable and apply that during the configuration. So what I'm going to do then is edit this. And instead of using a static one, I am going to do env. Um, environment. So save that. If I do a refresh of this page, you'll see that it says dev at the top here. Um, that's because it's reading that environment variable, setting the admin console title, and um, yeah, and then that's appearing in the browser window. So one thing to note is that if I were to come in here now and edit this, it would overwrite that setting. We do have um, ways to stop that from happening. You can do things like a um, read only PSU region. So if you put this in here, it actually will leave this um, this region alone so that uh, you can put things and the configuration system won't overwrite them. So now let's actually go and see what happens when we commit that up to GitHub. I'm going to click changes, uh, adding con or admin console header. I'm going to select my change and I'm going to commit. And if we go view the repository, one thing I'm going to do is switch to dev. And now you can see that we have a commit um, from my local machine up to um, the admin console, I mean to GitHub. And the, co the commit is adding admin console header. So that's the exact same commit message that I put inside um, PowerShell Universal. And I actually go look in here. You can see that we have the settings at PS1. And it's all the settings that I adjusted inside the admin console. So now the step would be to promote this to prod. So the first thing that I am going to do is I'm actually going to turn on my prod box. So this would, again, likely be on a production server. It wouldn't be on this. But this is an isolated directory um, inside my local machine. Uh, this is the same configuration, except that I've set that environment variable to prod rather than dev. And I'm just going to start it and start it on port um, 5002. So let's actually copy this path, go to my terminal here. We're going to run it. That's going to start up. And then we are going to open a browser to that page. So um, I'm actually log out of here. This will not actually be a problem if you're running on two different machines. As you can see, it doesn't have any of the Git configuration. It doesn't have um, the title changed or anything like that. So what we actually need to do is set up the Git sync again, because this is now in the prod environment. We need to point at the main branch rather than the dev branch and pull down um, any changes. So I'm going to go through the same process where I'm going to set up Git synchronization. I'm going to use the same remote since we're using the same repository. This time I'm going to leave the branch at main because I want to use the production uh, branch. I'm going to set this to main or uh, Adam Driscoll as my username for my GitHub access, same personal access token, and I'm going to set this to one way. So the way that one way works is it actually will pull changes rather than pull and push changes. So your production environment is only ever pulling changes; it's not pushing. So the Git flow is what's responsible for getting changes into the production environment. So the other settings don't really matter, except for maybe an external Git client. Um, again, if you're having issues, you could use this. The mode won't matter since you can't edit anything inside here anyways. So we will click OK. Just do a little refresh. And 
now your environment is effectively read only and the only way to update it is via git changes so i'm gonna click synchronize now and now you can see it pulled down that initial commit again with just that readme file because if you recall in the dev branch i made a change but i didn't commit it to uh, the prod branch so we have just the readme again this is kind of how we saw our dev branch before it has a single file in it um, but it doesn't have that settings file so let's actually merge that settings file into development or into production from development via a pull request so you can see here that um, git github is saying let's create a pull request there were some changes inside dev so i'm actually going to do that and you can see it's the adding the admin console header uh, create that pull request it's going to check to see if we can merge eventually and you can see here is our change the one commit that we made to this and we're good to uh, merge this into prod so i'm going to merge that that pull request in there this would be the opportunity for where you would um, allow your, your team to review changes and that kind of thing um, so no one is just pushing things into prod without you know someone else looking at it you could have approvers you could have rules that run and everything like that during pull requests in github or galea whatever you're doing um, again, you would probably want to protect your branches so that someone couldn't delete your dev branch. But in this case, this is a pretty plain environment that I've set up. So now um, you can see that in my main branch, I have merged in this pull request. I have the new admin console header. And if we come back to PowerShell Universal now, uh, if we go to the Git settings, you can see it's already automatically merged or pulled that down locally. and. Um, applied it to PowerShell Universal. If I refresh the title now, you'll see that the title now has gone to prod. So it loaded that settings.ps1 file. It got the different environment name because I sent a different environment variable in. And um, now you can see that I am you know, using my prod environment. And it'd be really obvious to go back and forth between dev and prod because you'll have the title there. So again, this could have all different kinds of resources, not just the settings. This could be scripts, this could be apps. Um, and you could work on them in dev and then eventually push them into um, the prod environment via a pull request. One other thing that I want to show is kind of the local developer experience because while yes, you could go through PowerShell Universal and make all these changes like inside your PowerShell Universal dev environment, Sometimes you might want to run this locally on your dev machine so that you can use all your development tools locally without having to go through the browser. VS Code's very good for PowerShell scripts. There's lots of tooling inside VS Code. So sometimes users might just want to um, do that locally. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to clone this locally. So I, let's see, I'm going to grab this URL here. And I was going to show this inside um, inside PowerShell Universal, but I'm actually just going to clone this locally into this local directory. And this would be like your local development environment. You could say git clone clones this file. I already have my credentials all set up. And now you can see I have the IT tools environment here. I want to check out the um, dev branch I don't want to do main directly you can actually set up rules to prevent people from doing pushes directly into main so that everything has to go through a pull request but I'm just gonna check out check out wait let's see what we got going here oh maybe I gotta go into the IT tools directory there we go <laughs> all right so now we've switched to dev so we're in our dev environment and um, let's say that I am working on this locally, I could actually have this IT tools directory set up in a fashion that I'm running a local instance of PowerShell Universal, it's reading these settings, but it's not actually set up to get through PowerShell Universal, it's just set up through um, VS Code or something like this. And I can make all my changes in VS Code, run it in PowerShell Universal locally, and then when I'm happy with it, push it up. So for example, I could change the um, information log level and if we actually go look in here, um, this is very confusing because there's too many folders. So I'm just going to do it in here. We could get status. And you can see I've updated the get settings or the 
dot universal settings ps1 file with that change to the log level I'm going to stage that then I'm going to commit that and this is a commit from VS code and I'm going to push that up so now that is inside github let's go back up to github let's do a little refresh here let's go to dev I guess so now you can see this branch is one commit ahead and one behind so if you wanted to do a pull request on this you can actually click create pull request new pull request I am taking dev to main create that pull request this is a commit from VS code and it's going to check for the availability to merge I have one change here you can see this is the change that I made in VS code information to error and now we're going to merge that into master or main so now that is in our production environment if we go back to um, main here you can actually see in settings it's now set to environment and if I come out to prod it may have gotten this already but if not you can click the synchronize now button and now you can see my commit from VS code has come in where it has made the change to from error level to information level and that setting will be reflected inside PowerShell Universal because it ran the git sync and picked up all those settings. So as you can see, um, this is kind of a more controlled fashion of uh, making changes in your production environment. You're not allowed to actually create anything inside this production environment because it has one way git sync on. Everything just comes in through git and pull requests, which you can review with your team uh, before they roll out to production. If you do have a large environment that you would like to do testing and that kind of thing, you could actually have another environment kind of in between dev and um, prod where you do you know quality assurance and that kind of thing, where you could promote changes from dev to quality assurance, test them inside a PowerShell Universal instance that is um, closer to prod than potentially the dev environment. And once uh, they've been approved there, then push them out to prod via uh, the git sync. So again, in this video, we looked at how to set up production and development environments in PowerShell Universal using Git.